In this video, I'm going to be using a SmartThings plug and home assistant to turn the white goods in my kitchen into smart devices, well, relatively smart devices. If you'd like to learn more, then stick around and watch the video. Thanks for watching. Hello, my name is Paul. Welcome to Project Smart Home. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I've turned my washing machine, tumble dryer and dishwasher into relatively smart devices. I'm using, in this situation, I'm using a SmartThings smart plug that does energy monitoring. So I can use that in the Home Assistant dashboard and I'm using Home Assistant as well. Um, I'm integrating these plugs into Home Assistant using Zigbeta MQTT but it's up to you how you want to do that integration. Um, so what I'm going to do is take you through how I'm using the plugs on those various white goods in the kitchen to do things like monitoring um, power consumption, energy consumption and probably the, the best thing about it is setting up some notifications so that once the tumble dryer washing machine or uh, dishwasher has finished its cycle we get a notification on Alexa or Google or uh, a text message sent to my device to let us know when that's finished so hopefully one of the kids will step up and uh, sort them out unload the dishwasher or, or whatever as part of their chores um, hopefully that's something that will be of use to you and I'll get into the detail of it now thanks for watching Okay, so what I'll do to start with is just take you through the three automations that I've got for the dishwasher, washing machine and tumble dryer. They're pretty similar, uh, but I'll go through them all anyway. And then what I'll do is I'll take you through how to set up your own automation from scratch, just in case you're interested in doing that. Um, I suppose the first thing to say is that all of these um, smart plugs that I'm using for those three devices... I just turn them on um, with voice control so I'll just tell um, Google or Alexa to switch on the particular device and then it will switch that device on so there's a level of um, integration between Home Assistant and Google or Alexa that needs to be in place as well um, which I probably won't go into in this video but to start with then if we have a look at the automations that I've got um, so let's have a look first. So this is the washing machine um, automation that I've got in place. So this is in the utility room. So I tend to label my automations with the room that they're in and then brief description of what they do. Um, so this is monitoring, this automation is monitoring the washing machine plug, which is, as I said in the intro, is a, is a smart things plug, but any smart plug could be used uh, for this automation as long as it integrates with Home Assistant and the additional thing that I do here is um, monitor power consumption as well which I'll show you later. So essentially the assumption here is that the plug is on because I've turned it on with using voice. The washing machine has completed its cycle um, so we're now monitoring for power changes so when the power of the plug is below five watts for three minutes then this automation can take place now the assumption is as well the condition is that the washing machine plug is on otherwise it's not no point doing it um, and then once that's been detected um, it'll turn off the washing machine plug so therefore saving energy um, it will play, the washing machine has finished its cycle, so let's see if we can get that to work. The washing machine has finished its cycle. And Google sounds a bit drunk today, she seems to be slurring a little bit. But yeah, essentially you, you can get that message to play wherever you want. Obviously if you had the washing machine running overnight you wouldn't want it blaring out in your bedroom, so you have to think about where you want that. Um, so I've got that playing in the utility room and also in the living room. So if we're sat in the living room at night and we want to know when the washing machine load is finished, then we'll get a notification in the living room as well. But as I say, that could be anywhere. Um, my wife and I also get notifications on our mobile devices and our phones 
to say that the washing machine cycle has finished. And by the way, if anybody's got a way to group these devices, that would be great because it's a pain in the butt having to add these individual notifications. So what I'd really like to do is have a group um, with mine and my wife's mobile phone in and then when I want to send a notification out I just send it to that group and both phones get it. I haven't found a way to do that but admittedly I haven't done that much research but if anybody's got a way of doing that I'd love to hear it in the comments. Um, so that's as straightforward as that. The only, yeah, as, as I said, it's playing in the living room as well. Um, so that is the washing machine. So if I show you the others quickly, because they're going to be very similar for the tumble dryer. And this was a little bit of trial and error, actually, I found with different things. So here, um, again, I've got a separate Smart Things plug plugged into the tumble dryer so again when the power changes on that plug for um, below five watts for three minutes and the tumble dryer plug is on then it, the first thing it will do is turn the tumble dryer off it'll send a notification to my wife's phone and my phone and also send a message to um, the utility room Hello. I just wanted to let you know that the tumble dryer has finished. Sounds a bit better. Um, yeah, so within here, I guess people know how to do this, but um, I'm just using um, the text to speech text. I can't say it myself. Text to speech services, and I say I'll, I'll take you through how to create this in a minute. So I get notifications on mobile devices and a verbal notification as well on my Google infrastructure. And then the last one then is just the dishwasher. If I can spell it, dishwasher, dishwasher plug. Similar thing again, um, monitoring the wattage. I said it's a bit of trial and ever, error. So on this one, I've had to put it when it go, goes below two watts on the dishwasher for three minutes. Um, so you may need to tinker with the settings around a bit, just depending on how your particular appliance works. Assuming the dishwasher plugs on, I'm going to turn that off and then send notifications to um, my wife's phone and my phone when it's finished. You just get a simple notification, the dishwasher cycle has finished. Um, you can get a bit creative with these messages. So as I said in the intro, um, my kids have chores to do around unloading the dishwasher and putting some washing on so you can get them to get notifications as well um, as part of the same thing so you know if the dishwasher has finished its cycle or the washing machine's finished its cycle you could put some sort of message in there to say kids it's finished uh, come and unload the dishwasher or uh, washing machine or whatever and then I've got a message playing on my communal speaker. So I've basically grouped uh, three or four Google speakers together and I've got an announcement going out um, to say that, that that's finished. Um, so that's that's the three automations, essentially. What I'll do now is I'll um, get up two different screens and I'll show you how the process of creating one of those. What I'll do now then is take you through the process of creating one of these automations for yourself. So I've split this, my screen into two halves. On the left hand side, I've got the existing washing machine plug and notification automation. And on the right hand side, what we're going to do is create a brand new automation. So what we want to do is first of all, start off with the trigger and we're using the washing machine that device and we're using the washing machine device plug as we've got over here on the left when the power when the power changes oops to below and again you're gonna have to test this out to see what works on your device um, because you may have to change the um, below what level or the time um, 
notification as well so a bit of trial and error, that, error there so that's the when piece and then what we'll do is we can add the condition so again device washing machine plug and the utility room is on so it's only going to run it when it's on for five minutes and then we can add the action what you want it to do so the first thing I always want it to do is um, switch the plug off which switches the switches the washing machine off saving a little bit of electricity because you're not leaving it on all the time and whoops and then we'll go to add another action what do you want it to do so from a device notification point of view so what I'm going to do is have a verbal announcement on a media player so I use the play media I'm going to select the utility room speaker which is a Google Google dot thing what they're called Google home uh, speaker that's in the utility room and do text to speech and then you pit pit Pick your favourite, uh, I'll go with Google. There you go, the washing machine has finished its cycle. So you type something in that's appropriate. And in fact, what have I got in over here? So, utility room. There you go, the washing machine has finished its cycle. So, so you could get creative with the messages that are sent out. So if it's, you know, if you want one of the kids to do it, then you can put kids, don't forget to, un uh, the washing machine's finished. Come and unload it, please. And then that's one notification. And then obviously you can do that with whatever speakers around your house. And then we can ha also have um, a call service. A notification. Notification. Um, which is going to be sent to my phone if I can find it. Motorola Razor 50 saying that the what did I say same message it's finished and that's it so what I'll do is I'll show you um, what that looks like on the screen so you can see the type of message that you get prompted with on your mobile device um, the washing machine has finished its cycle oh there you go um, so that's it that's as easy as that and you know obviously if you've got multiple plugs for your different devices then it's a similar sort of process um, I think that's all I want to show you thanks I'll show you now is just how I can monitor um, power and energy consumption so if you saw my previous video I went into a bit of detail about how I'm using the integrated energy dashboard in uh, home assistant and also that I've created kind of my own power dashboard as well so I'll just show you both of those uh, quickly now so this is my kind of main dashboard it doesn't look great on a laptop it looks much nicer on um, mobile device which is where I tend to tend to use it and I'll I'll show you how that looks as well just out of interest for you um, but essentially here under my power button or tile on the dashboard on the right hand side here uh, in here I've got a list of all of my devices around the house that consume power and electricity that I can monitor either using smart plugs or CT clamps or um, I'm using various Shelly devices around the house for lighting and radiators and things um, so in here let's find the washing machine which is here tumble dryer and dishwasher so we can see the consumption of um, of the devices so what's this from yesterday at four o'clock 
we had a couple of loads running uh, which got to just over two kilowatts so 2.174 2.3 kilowatts 2.322 kilowatts at peak and then obviously nothing overnight um, and then today again this morning it's been running for various points until about two o'clock this afternoon there's been various loads on so if you're into that sort of information it's quite nice to have the historical information as well uh, it's the same sort of situation for the tumble dryer <coughs> and dishwasher so the dishwasher that kind of peaks out at it's that 1.6 2 point just over two kilowatts there 2.2 kilowatts but the interesting thing here is the tumble dryer it's one of these heat pump tumble dryers so the most supposed to be a bit more efficient and we can kind of see that here it's only using about 600 watts of electricity when it's on but it does stay on for a little bit longer so you'd have to work out whether that's beneficial to you or not um, yeah, so that's that's kind of how I make use of these and just to give you a quick view of how I add those in there. So if we find the washing machine on. So again, it's using the power entity from the plug and I can see it as a line chart or a bar chart. Yeah, it doesn't look good. That's probably why I've chosen line chart. I think it gives you a better view. And then you can see the min max and mean of the um, consumption I tend to monitor over a five minute period and show a day view but you could obviously change that to, to give you more more days if that's what you're looking for um, put that back to one and then you could do it over five minutes an hour a day whatever's appropriate for you Okay, so that's it, and it's just using um, the statistics graph card from Home Assistant. There's no kind of third party um, graphs or reporting that I'm using there. Okay, and that's it for that section. The only other thing, let's have a quick look at whether I can do anything in here with regard to. Um, let's have a look if I can add a card for, let's do a vertical stack, vertical stack, can't spell vertical. Um, and then we'll put the graph, statistics graph, so that's what we would add in there. And we'd put the um, washing machine plug power there. And we'll do that as a line chart. We'll do it hourly over one day. Oh, five minutes I did last time. Then five minutes. And then the thing that I wanted to do as well on here is just show you that what you can do with these plugs is also add, so we'll add an entity, entity, guess that one, entity, let's have a look, and then we'll do washing machine plug energy. There we go. So it's showing here now. It's showing here. Both. The energy consumption in kilowatt hours, 289 kilowatt hours, and then I've also got the live real time power consumption. So that's probably quite a nice way to represent both sets of information on here um, so I'm gonna, probably going to stick with that one now and then if you work well, depending on where you want it in your dashboard you can obviously move those things around so where do I want it I'll move that up to 
There's the other one. Washing machine is seven. So if I move that to eight. Washing machine eight and I'll get rid of that old one. That's better, and that's what I've started to do with these some of these others as well. So my air, air source heat pump and monitoring power consumption and energy consumption. Hopefully that was of use. I'll um, show you the native um, energy consumption in Home Assistant next. So as you're probably aware, uh, Home Assistant comes with its own energy dashboard. Um, which I've set mine up. I've kind of covered this in a previous video, so I won't go through it again, but it's it's a fantastic tool. If you've got the, um, the sensors there to consume around your house for power, solar, battery, uh, EV charges, whatever it may be, then this, this kind of pulls all that information together into a single dashboard. So you can see uh, energy usage of different devices, solar panel information you know how self-sufficient you're being and what's going back onto the grid uh, but the bit i wanted to show you was because i've got the smart plugs with the power energy consumption built into them i can add those into this so i can in i can monitor individual power consumption so on this um bar chart at the bottom I can see the different power consumption of the devices I've got set up. So where's my washing machine? So washing machine has used 1.5 kilowatt hours of energy today. Today being the 5th of August, I've got set up here, but we can change that. Uh, and then dishwasher, washing machine, and you, it's just great that you can see all the different tools in there as well. Um, so you can obviously change this to show a different view of the world if you want to get a better view of or a bigger bigger picture of consumption. So my Zappy car charger is is leading the way with the amount of energy it's using. Um, so that's that's a really nice view, and you can start prodding people around the house if they're leaving TVs on for too long or um, or whatever. Um, so the way that you would add your plugs, smart plugs in, if you go to dashboards in settings and then your energy dashboard and then um, under individual devices, you can add your devices in here. And I've added in my washing machine, dishwasher and tumble dryer there. So again, it's just the, the energy rather than the power the energy entity so you get the kilowatt hour um, value being pulled through um, so if you want to know more about this or go into this in a bit more detail have a look at my other monitoring um, video which i go into that in a bit more detail hopefully that was of use thanks for watching just to spend a couple of minutes then giving you some supporting information around um, how i've got the um, plugs imported and how I'm doing the Google and Alexa integration so as I mentioned in the intro I'm using Zigbee to MQTT which is an option to allow you to bring all of your Zigbee devices into Home Assistant so I'm using a Raspberry Pi and I've got a Zigbee dongle connected to the back of my Raspberry Pi, which is uh, allowing me to connect my Zigbee devices into Home Assistant, and then I've got Zigbee to MQTT configured. So, as you can see here, I've got my dishwasher plug, various other plugs around the house, actually, washing machine plug, um, and it's just really easy to add Zigbee devices in here. You just have to um, enable joining, and then you just pair the Zigbee device with um, Zigbee to MQTT. Once it's in here, then the um, entities and um, device um, devices kind of flow through into Home Assistant and that's where you can kind of 
configure everything. I do find occasionally these drop off, so I just have to click this um, this reconfigure button, and it seems to go off to the device again and wake it up or whatever it does, and kind of springs back into life again. But um, yeah, I sometimes find if the plug stops working or stops responding, then I have to do that. Maybe it's just a smart things plug issue. I don't know. So I just wanted to show you that, and then. As I mentioned, I'm using um, Alexa and uh, Google devices. So once you've got those available, I'm using Nabucasa um, to expose my Google and Alexa um, devices to the internet, essentially. So you can consume the Home Assistant content. So I was going to go into Home Assistant Cloud, but it's um, the, the configuration's not in there anymore. It's, it's been moved and uh, under assistance. Um, so in here, you would need to go in and expose the entities that you would like Google or Alexa to be able to consume. So in here, I should have things like my washing machine plug, dishwasher plug, uh, tumble dryer plug. So based on this, the F Google Alexa and Home Assistant assistants <laughs> can um, make use of these. So when I tell uh, the devices to do something, they can, you know, like I said, you know, hey, Google, switch on tumble dry plug. It would go off and do that because it's got that level of integration. Um, there's a lot more detail to it that, than that, but um, um, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you do need any more help with this sort of stuff, then give us a shout and I'll try my best to help you out. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you found today's video useful. As I said, um, I find it particularly useful in my house for sending those notifications out after the washing machine tumble dryer or dishwasher is finished. Um, I can use those to prompt the kids to do their chores and unload the dishwasher or tumble dryer or uh, unload the, um, the the washing machine. So that works really well for us in, in our house and it's kind of a good prompt as well because sometimes the, the washing machine gets, gets left and might get left overnight and then the washing stinks and needs to be rewashed again. Um, it's also great. I like to, to see the power consumption of these things. Um, I'm a bit sad like that, but if that's of interest to you, then make sure that if you are buying a smart device to plug into your uh, white goods, then make sure it's got that uh, power monitoring capability as well. So a relatively quick video today. Hope it's something that you can make use of. If you've got any feedback, um, if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please like it and consider subscribing for anything in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.